I'm Pam, I'm 60 years old, and I love to hike. Today's hike is number 17, and we're heading about 40 miles south of Tucson to the Santa Rita Mountains. Mount Wrightson is one of the tallest peaks in southern Arizona at 9,453 feet. The Old Baldy Trail is about 11 miles up and back with an elevation gain of over 4,000 feet. My old and dear friend Courtney is visiting from Seattle looking for birds. The Old Baldy Trail starts in Madeira Canyon. It's home to more than 250 species of birds, and birders come from all over the world to seek them out. Courtney and I are doing a birding hike. I've never done one of these before. I met Courtney in Seattle 35 years ago, and she's in Arizona with some birder friends of hers. Today we are on the old Baldy Trail, headed up to the top of Mount Wrightson. It's a gorgeous day. The birds think so too. Tons of birds out. We have a hepatic tanager, okay. which is a really red, beautiful bird. A house wren, which kind of has a yeah, yeah, yeah. trill, a hermit thrush, and I'm sure it was picking up its call rather than its song, because I know its song, and a red-faced warbler. White-breasted nuthatch. Good job. Can you see it? They like the red breasted nuthatch in Washington, like to come and stay close to their trunk. So I'm trying to peer through right. to the riddles. Like when you hear a bird, how can you tell what it is? But if you're trying to identify a bird, listen to is it a call, like a chip, like that? And then in the spring, they'll have more of a, a mating call right. song that's much more identifiable. Where does it seem like it's coming from? Hone in on it and then focus your eyes softly and look for motion. Then you can start to see, are they near the bark? Are they out on the limb? Are they flying? Some have kind of a, a unique flying pattern. And I'm a complete novice, but so I'm applying it today with no professional birders around. No, but I've always been fearless that way. <laughs> Thank you. Courtney is a personal trainer, helping athletes achieve extreme physical goals such as Mount Rainier and Mount Everest, or maybe a Grand Canyon rim to rim to rim. She and her husband coach athletes from all over the world through both their physical gym and their online site. However, up until now, Court has never hiked in Arizona. That's elegant Trogan. Elegant Trogan. G-O-N. Very rare. Sounds like a dog bark. Wait. My count? We're up high enough that we might hear more today. Yay! But having a myrtle in as the guide is kind of nice because it's, it's my backup or clutch, I guess. <laughs> Look at how it's just like constant that slope. I know. <laughs> it's not really what I expected. is a Hutton's Vireo, and that was the spotted tail again. So, both good. It's not so much this part, but it's a solace. Yeah. Yeah, so you can do that same thing. Uh -huh. Just like, so you can, you can get into that position uh -huh. as low as you can, contract for three, so you're tensing. Slow and steady, in three.
As we neared the peak of Mount Wrightson, Courtney started getting a headache. This was unusual for her, but it can be caused by higher altitudes. We stayed at the top for a while, exploring the ruins of an old stone fire lookout and taking in the 360 degree views. Since Mount Wrightson towers above the surrounding peaks, you truly feel like you're on top of the world. As we descended the mountain, Courtney's headache only got worse. We hiked through a long stretch of west-facing slope that was burned by fire several years ago. The temperature was only in the mid-70s, but we had very little shade from the afternoon sun. Court finally told me that she needed to sit down. Her face was flushed and she began to act slightly confused and even slur her words. To my shock, I recognized the signs of heat exhaustion. Court had done everything right for an Arizona hike, including lots of water, protection from the sun, electrolytes, you name it. She is a professional trainer and one of the fittest and most prepared people I know. But her mountains are the Cascades and places like Mount Rainier. That's a heat stroke. Oh, really? Bring me out. To her, 75 degrees is a very warm day. We had plenty of water, so we kept dousing her head and her sunshirt to cool her down. Walt and I carried her gear and we slowly made our way down the last couple of miles, helped by some friendly hikers who gave her aspirin. We finally made it to the car, shaken by the experience. But as always, Courtney has taken this and turned it into a lesson for the athletes she trains. Ha 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 ha!